Mr. Sugar Babes at 849. And like I said, uh, a cricketer, now author, John T. Rhodes is here. What's up, John T? How are you doing? Rashid, very good. Thanks, and you? Well, i got to say this. I'm, I'm doing well. Uh, a lot of your fans have been waiting for this one, mate. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I must say, I'm, it's not too... As a cricket player, you, you actually talk a lot of rubbish. So this is the perfect next step in, in, in my career as an author. And, and really, for you, uh, you're such a music man, you know. Every time there's a shot of John T. Rhodes on the television in the dugout, you've got your iPod on. It's almost as though you don't want to hear anybody speak and you want to be tuned into your music. <laughs> well, there's a lot of nonsense, as I said, that goes on around the cricket field, and especially in Mumbai. I mean, they're, they're, it's such an amazing stadium to play cricket at and to focus and to concentrate. Sometimes you've got to shut it off completely. Mm -hmm. I, I just love this whole idea. You know, this morning I was up at five and it's such a breezy read. Uh, uh, my South African escapades with John T. Rhodes getting flow four blokes from India via contest to come in and hang with you in South Africa. Whose bright idea? Yours or, or somebody else's? <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely not mine. I must confess, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a team player. I, I do like to have a captain telling me or, or suggesting good ideas in South African tourism played that role you know I'm just someone who follows orders pretty well you know, the bit tough part about writing a book is this you've got to spend time on the laptop every night you know somebody told me you know write a book uh, on the radio life and I said I'm good on the mic I'm no good on the keyboard so did you, did you follow that discipline hmm? well the typical part was we had a, such a, an extensive itinerary I mean 14 days we were in 10 different cities 10 different hotels we, we so only two nights rated to stay in the same hotel twice or on two occasions so it was quite difficult to, to be that disciplined but fortunately, we had a lot of downtime traveling. South Africa is it's not like India. You actually can get from A to B in, in half a day, you know, on the road. So we had a lot of downtime in the car. And these days with technology, you can almost write it on a, you know, on your phone these days. So from that point of view, I was very grateful. <laughs> okay, in just a couple of moments, I'm going to get uh, Rohit, who's my associate producer, to pick, uh, get some pictures of John T in studio. And we're going to put it up on twitter.com slash hrishikay. And that's linked to facebook.com slash hrishikay. It's going to be a fun chat because I'm going to alternate this, yeah, so that we don't alienate you cricket fans. So it's going to be one cricket, one book, one cricket, one book. Because remember now, he's not just a cricketer stroke fielding coach. He's also an author, John T. Road. Some messages coming up. In conversation with John T. Rhodes, you know, uh, flashback, 1992, Inzuma Mahulak taking a, a run, and uh, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's John T. <laughs> that is a long time ago. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, you're going to have to live with that every single day of your life when you meet a fan like me who turns around and says, man, what was running through your mind? Well, Didn't you just think of throwing the ball instead of throwing yourself? <laughs> well, I did, I did for half a second, but uh, yeah, at that stage, I... As a fielder, I was renowned for the stopping of the ball as opposed to hitting the stump. So uh, mm -hmm. we needed a wicket. Inzimam and Imran Khan were going with great guns at that stage. And I just backed myself to get there faster than Inzi. Because let's face it, Inzi is not renowned for his turn of speed on the field and not between the wickets. And <laughs> nothing, really nothing went through my, my brain at all, which is something that does happen on, yeah. on the odd occasion. I do have a, a blank a blank <laughs> mind. Which actually is supposed to be really good. You know what they say about yoga and meditation. Absolutely. You're supposed to have a blank mind. Yeah. Yeah. A blank canvas. You need to start from scratch all the time. So mm. you know, it, was just, it was one of those things that happened. hadn't planned it, never done it before, hadn't planned to do it. And it just worked out perfectly. And someone took a great picture. You know, the photograph that then literally went splashed around the world the next day. So I went from being a nobody to suddenly somebody who, who ran out in Zimam Ah, oh, you're being kind, being a nobody. At that time, you were starting off. Let me just put it that way. But, but I'll tell you this. It's wonderful that somebody got you on camera because, you know, my favorite cricketer, the legend Kapil Dev, he had 183 not out in the World Cup against Zimbabwe in 1983. And there's not a single picture of that innings because nobody was at Tunbridge Wells. <laughs> <laughs> India versus Zimbabwe. <laughs> not even a photographer. Not even a photographer. Yeah. Can you believe it? That is crazy. Maybe, I think the BBC was on strike or something that day. You know, it's it one of those things. Now, listen, uh, so I Africa. I've been there, you know, I, I remember taking a small little plane into Hoke Strait and going into the Kruger and I saw the big five. But uh, uh, these blokes, the four blokes you took on my travel escapades in South Africa, uh, they must have been thrilled out of their socks. <laughs> well, the awesome foursome, as they called themselves, we, we almost became the big five with, with John T. Rhodes and, and the awesome foursome. But it, it, was a, it was a great event. I mean, they, I wasn't quite sure what to expect when they arrived. They would certainly very big cricket fans we had a few cricketing discussions post IPL of course and uh, it was it was great fun though it was good for me to be able to take people around I mean as, as a South African the saddest thing for me is I actually, I've spent more time in India and other countries than I actually do traveling around South Africa so it was kind of it was great to have them with me but it was also some of the places that I've been with my parents um, as a boy I was getting the chance to revisit those again so a lot of good fun
And uh, which is your favorite? I mean, it's a difficult thing. It's like asking your mum to pick out a favorite child. But Cape Town, Durban, Johannesburg, what really is your favorite? Or is it just the, the game reserves? Well, I think the, the game reserves are certainly something that I I've actually just... What is today? Today is Thursday. I've yeah. just got back from the game reserve. I was there Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Wow. And I do whatever I can, <laughs> spoil myself and, and get out into the, into the bush because the game reserves are really spectacular. But like you say, difficult to choose one particular destination to visit in South Africa. There are so many. Mm -hmm. But as I said earlier, I mean, it's a, it's, the infrastructure is really good. To travel from one place to the next is very, very easy. So in a week, you can travel a great deal. So let alone the two weeks that we had with the, with the awesome foursome. And you were, I think, born in Peter Maritzburg, yeah. right? And then and you've lived in a couple of cities in South Africa yourself. Yeah, right? I, I grew up in Peter Maritzburg mm -hmm. until I was, sure, 23, 24, moved down to Durban. And, and in the last four years, I have been living in, in Cape Town. Well, in a suitcase, I suppose, but mm -hmm. based in Cape Town. So I, There's a line in the book which I love. It says, the office, close to the office at Kingsmead. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Spent many an hour watching other guys bat and, and fielding it in a rather humid Durban sort of summer sun but yeah a great time to and a great place to work I mean it's, it's not as it's not as sexy as being an RJ I must confess but being a cricketer <laughs> I like that let's do some in excess it's Michael Hutchins God bless his soul taste it at 9.00 my name is Rishi K in conversation with the one and only John T. Rose it's tasted by in excess Ryan Knight's Day Lewis my god all the fans are coming in now he says uh, fabulous job that John T. is doing as, uh, as the fielding coach of the Mumbai Indians yes I completely agree you know, he's changed the whole dynamics of it. Though he's kind enough to constantly talk about how uh, the other teams are, uh, uh, you know, are doing so well. You, you're p personally really, really impressed with Virat Kohli and those two runouts uh, uh, in that particular game, right? Mm. Yeah, I have been. And, and people keep asking me about the fielding standards in India. And you know, it's not just one or two players like it was a long time ago. Guys like Virat Suresh Raina, I mean, they are Jadeja as well. Um, you know, everybody, all the young players get selected as batting batsmen or bowlers or even all-rounders. You know, they they certainly are pretty pretty okay in the field, to put it mildly. I mean, Virat, the, the, he blew us away in, in literally two throws at the stumps. He took out our middle order. So a little bit frustrating to play against, but awesome to watch. Yeah, and also, uh, you think he's got a good head on his shoulders. A lot of people would say, toss up between Rohit Sharma and Virat Kohli as the future captain. And, and you know, you've worked with Rohit. He was captain of your of your team, the Mumbai Indians. Hmm? Yeah, I think yeah, the, the key with, with captains is obviously one person is going to be a captain, but you also want leaders within the team. And I think a guy like, like Rohit is, uh, is a lot quieter than, than Virat. So very different personalities and, and sometimes easier for the quieter guy to be a leader without having to be the captain. And I think Rohit is, is certainly a player who I've got to, great deal of respect for his ability and also just his demeanor on the field you know he's he, he can certainly he doesn't go to sleep he's just got a very different personality to Virat Kohli but it'd be a great person to back someone as fiery as Virat to back him up in the field because sometimes you need calmer heads around you just to guide you in the right direction that's right okay my South African escapades my travel es escapades in South Africa John T. Rhodes is available on Lonely Planet so you guys can go and get a copy of that it's actually a really really breezy uh, read and some beautiful pictures you know uh, with with uh, John T. also along with his crew in the Fezulu cultural village I love that getting a, a taste of do you have a, a, the local beer too get the four <laughs> boys to try that <laughs> yeah, we're still early in the morning and we had a long way to go and, and uh, the evening actually or the afternoon activity was ziplining above a, a, a sort of treetops through the forest so I don't know any, any of the guys have had too much beer by the time they got there so no we <laughs> kept it pretty much uh, strictly work only and by the time we got to the evening dinner then yeah there was a time to relax but I don't want to lose anybody top of the trees uh, further up, up the road so no there was no, none of the traditional beer yeah, and, and Jonti, this is the largest or the tallest bungee jump in the world. I had no clue till I read your book. Yeah, Tell me about that. Yeah. Well, I mean, South Africa is certainly, as, a, as an ad adventure destination, has got some great opportunities. It's not just standing next to a sort of five-ton elephant that walks past your, your open vehicle. I mean, that's in itself is probably more heart-thumping than the bungee jumping. But the, the highest commercial bungee jump in the world is, is, is the blow crowns, which we all did. And we, we didn't all jump. Some of us crumpled over because you, you kind of stand there very brave on the bridge and by the time you, you put your toes over the edge and there's 215 or 16 meters below you, it's not that easy to dive out. One of the uh, the, the crew there, he just bundled something up and said, yeah, John, to catch this, you know, to help me to dive over the edge. But it's quite difficult because your, your fear kind of gets a grip of you and your knees buckle more than actually push you off the bridge. I tell you what you're scared of, reptiles. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. You won't see any pictures of me holding the python in, in this book at all. Was, I think you're right about it, but I'm definitely not one that's going to be touching it. Shania Twain from this moment on, and I've got some wonderful questions for John T. And if you have questions to it, it's twitter.com slash hrishiky.com.
Y and Facebook.com slash HRISHIKAY. Okay, you can go to those two platforms and ask questions. From this moment on, Shania Twain. This is Good Morning Mumbai and you're with Rishi K. Radio I'm with John T. Rhodes. My God, the fans are going crazy. Pranav Desai on uh, Twitter. Hey Pranav, what's up? Ask John T. He's also a hockey goalkeeper representing South Africa while growing up. Uh, grape wine. I remember a little story about you almost being at the Barcelona Olympics in 1992 as a field hockey player. A little bit about that, John T. Yeah, yeah I grew up as a, my father was a teacher and at 71 he's still coaching and wow. he's still teaching. And in, in South Africa, if you're a, a, a if you are a teacher, you also are a sports master. So I'm in the middle of two boys or three boys, and my younger brother was a really talented sportsman. So we played a lot of sport growing up as kids, everything from football, field hockey, tennis, cricket, and field hockey was probably the sport that I was best at. But it, it came to a situation where cricket had was united in South Africa it's during apartheid era. So they had white and non-white sporting organisations, mm. and Dr. Ali Bakker, who who ran cricket South Africa, or cr- the cricket board joined the two white and non-white cricketing bodies so cricket was the first sport that got back into even before democracy which is only 1994 in south africa so hockey wasn't quite prepared politically you know so i kind of hope one day to play for south africa even though there was no south africa to play for but more with a hockey stick rather than a cricket bat and and what uh, position are you playing at? No, I was a centre forward. I wasn't a goalkeeper. These little legs are far too short. I wouldn't be able to reach the corner of the of the goals. You know, you see the goalkeepers these days, whether it's football or hockey, they are tall guys, very athletic. Sure, the diving around is one thing, but you need to be able to reach the corner. And, and those days, who's your uh, your idol on the hockey field? I loved Rick Charlesworth, for example. Yeah, so, uh, who it's crazy. Like? I mean, and sadly for me, from a South African context, whether it was cricket or hockey, there was no South African team to follow because of, of the apartheid. There was sporting and economic sanctions. So Rick Charlesworth certainly was a name that, that as, a, as a young hockey player, I certainly really respected. And we didn't get to watch much, but we certainly followed you know, the way the Australian played and just the way he led the team as a captain. Mm-hmm. The food uh, in uh, your book is spectacular. My travel escapades in South Africa. Every single day on the tour, one aspect is devoted to food. You're a foodie, aren't you? <laughs> well, the worst part about my job is that I get to travel, which mm. is quite sedentary. So you sit around a lot. You know, you get from place A to place B. Whether I'm coaching Mumbai Indians, you, you're kind of watching the other guys do all the hard work. So I came out here with during the last IPL knowing that I had a two-week stint of literally breakfast, lunch and supper, three to five courses, sometimes a seven-course meal coming ahead of me so I, I came to India I worked really hard I lost some weight and put it all back on again so yeah <laughs> <laughs> food is a big part of what I do and, and fortunately I'm not just oh, this is South African food there's only cuisine I eat I eat everything I, I love coming to India people ask me about the food and I say the biggest problem is that I love all of it so as, as, a, as a non-veg I enjoy the vegetarian fare that passes my nose as well so you, you kind of get an oversupply of food in India there is an, another one of my favorite jaunty roads on field moments Lance Klusner bowling and uh, suddenly the ball, ball is flying up in the air. We think, you know, it's going to go uh, past backward point for, for four or six. And you just pluck it off the air. So it can't be all anticipation. I mean, it's, it's got to be those reflexes, man. Yeah, Any yeah. exercises for the reflexes? No? Yeah, yeah. practice. <laughs> you know, it's practice, mm. certainly. I, I probably picked up most of my bruises and injuries at field practice. But don't forget, now I'm, I'm a member of a, a very strong coaching sort of contingent with the Mumbai Indians is five of us who, who put in some work with, with the players and when I was playing cricket for South Africa there was only one coach one mm. physiotherapist and, and one manager so any work that you did you did with the players so Gary Kirsten and myself we would work as a batting partnership and then go work in the field too so that sure it was was reflexes was certainly one thing that I, that I had in abundance as a youngster and they were just honed the more sports that I played and the second thing was just, there is no shortcut. It is hard work. You know? right. But when you're loving what you're doing, it never seems like hard work. So I think that was a, the biggest advantage. Is that I was probably the only player in the world at the time who actually enjoyed fielding. You know, without it being suddenly a, a glorified and important part of the game. You know, I kind of burst onto the scene and fielding was just something you did between overs while you were yeah. sort of bowling and then waiting to go and bat. You had to stand in the field for a while. So I had a huge advantage that I really loved being out there. Mm-hmm. Okay, you know, I've, I've got so many people asking about his health drink. I met him a few times to launch the same in our stores. Nice song. Sorry, bloke. <laughs> Dupindra Sandhu. We're only doing book and cricket right now, but uh, appreciated that you would shout out. Uh, thank you, May. Thank you, Sherry. <laughs> Vidyut uh, says he's missing the conversation with Jaunty. Why are you not freaking on the radio, brother? Siddharth Nair. Cheers to the man who actually defied gravity on the cricket field. I like that. And now on his way to win the Booker Prize award. <laughs> Booker Prize? Far from it, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> Very much far from it. <laughs> You're a police fan, yeah. I am. Yeah. And what's your what's your favorite police song? What's the one that you like? Every mm. breath she takes, for sure. 
Of course. And here we go with that song. After some messages, we're back with John T. Rhodes. We're talking his uh, his book life and his cricket life. <laughs> 